describing a place like Bimbia, one needs to go really deep into the history of Bimbia. I mean, it's now that we are getting uh, a grasp of what Bimbia used to be. Like it's said by many scholars also, you can also read in books, Bimbia was actually a state. It wasn't just like Bimbia, it was called the Isuku state. Going back to these times, you would see that there were different uh, uh, methods of uh, interaction between states and also people from the outside. But uh, following this history, we've also seen that a lot has been hidden from us or has been abandoned, like the structure that we have here now. And uh, we know very little or nothing about what really happened here. What we know about Bimbia, as per se, uh, is that Bimbia was a slave port that transported slaves from all, or, or that slaves that were captured, or African people that were captured to be slaves from all the Cameroonian regions were brought also to Bimbia uh, to be transported to the Americas. So if you look at this history, not much has been said about it. If you look at this structure, you've seen that it has been abandoned and even not much is known about it. Where do we come inside, like an organization or like a civil society uh, network? You have a lot of uh, different ones popping, but we also lack the uh, uh, the fleur, I would say, of criticalness in this civil society because it's not only about Bimbia being a historical site, it's about Bimbia understanding where we find ourselves today and where we are going in future. So how do we see Bimbia as an organization piece? We see Bimbia like a place where captured ancestors and ancestresses came and were supposed to be transported. Some of them resisted in Bimbia some of them lost your life fighting and some of them fought even in the ships. So this is how we want to see it critically. We don't want to see it like African people or slaves were caught and brought here and taken to Americas. We want to see how these slaves resisted. We want to see how these slaves fought back the Europeans. We, have to, we want to see how this place, Bimbia, how these structures need to be revisited, needs to, uh, to be researched upon and that facts that were hidden, facts that were abandoned, facts that are critical to our well-being today, facts that are critical for our future engagement with our children, that these facts should come out. So with that, we learn to understand that history is not only what is in the past. History is how you build yourself today and to plan for tomorrow. This is what Peace is trying to do as a project in Bimbia. The other way around, like one of our ancestors said, we should not make the same mistake trying to mobilize people to fight an enemy. We should first wake these people up. That's why we talk about sensitization. It's not only about knowing your history, it's about sensitizing people how important this history is. And that's why it's very important for the youths, actually the African youths, not only Cameroonian youths. I mean, when I say Cameroon, I see, I see post-slavery, post-colonial Cameroon, because Cameroon had a different entity before these times, and it was reshaped by the Europeans. So we want African youths. We, had, we want a pan-African spirit to be uh, pushed upon us to sensitize and know critical history, not only knowing history, but critical history. This is what we are planning to do, or at least planning to uh, create awareness for people in Bimbia, for people in Limbe, for people in the Southwest, for the Cameroonians and for Africans to understand that this could be even more than Gore in Senegal, could be more than the other uh, 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 slave ports that were discovered also in Ghana and other places. This is something that has to be restored. This is something that needs all our attention as Africans. This is something that needs all our support as people of a continent.